it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to take an up-close and personal in-depth look into the 2008 Honda Civic Si Mugen. Big shout out and thanks to Cosmo Motors and Hickory, North Carolina for providing this example. For more information on their dealership and current inventory, please feel free to check out their website right in the description box below. A special mention and thanks to my friend Will for providing this 2007 Civic Si sedan so we can compare it against the Mugen. We're going to take this up and down the track a bunch of times throughout the countryside, so it's going to be a pretty fun video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Farmington Dragway and how to take your car out there, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. As always, this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the Civic Si and Civic Si Mugen. We'll start them up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. All Mugens were finished in a signature color known as Fiji Blue Pearl, a really pretty color especially in the sunlight. The other example will be contrasting as finished in Rally Red. Inside for both this is the standard SI black cloth interior. The SI features variable speed sensitive right companion steering with electric power assistance, unlike the other non-hybrid Civics which used a more traditional hydraulic setup at the time. The speed sensitive design increases assistance at low speeds and reduces it at higher speeds for more relaxed and precise behavior respectively. A lower mounted steering box introduced for the Gen 8 Civics in 2006 improved the input geometry into the front suspension to deliver a more direct feel than its predecessor. The electric steering features a quicker ratio of 13.6 to 1 and it takes 2.65 turns to lock. The turning circle is a tight 35.4 feet. It's routed through a sporty 3-spoke multifunction steering wheel and is one of my favorite interior design elements. The wheel is mostly wrapped in perforated leather and features subtle grip bolsters at 10 and 2, satin silver trim and a mesh portion in the bottom spoke. A manually tilting telescoping wheel came standard. At the time of filming the Mugen, we really didn't have a chance to take it out on the road, but as we'll discuss later in the video, mechanically the car is identical to a standard SI, including the powertrain. The biggest differences for Mugens is the lower ride height and stiffer suspension tuning to give it that additional handling edge. Both the SI and SI Mugen were only offered with a close ratio 6-speed manual transmission, sending power to the front wheels through a helical type limited slip differential. The latter sends power to the outside wheel, the one with the most traction, to essentially rotate the car through tight corners while reducing understeer. This transmission drives fantastic. Ever since I first drove the car, I thought it was one of the smoothest and easiest manual transmissions out there. The throws are short, the clutch has a nice amount of weight to it without being too firm, and it's almost geared perfectly for high RPM driving. When upshifting at the limit, revs drop just enough to keep the car within the meat of its peak torque. This is a car that loves to rev. When approaching redline, a red LED shift light begins to flash. It's endlessly entertaining. Through the corners, it's responsive and fun. The SI is a pretty agile car for what it is and always feels light on its feet. The trick for performance driving is to use the SI's full power band as it really comes alive at faster engine speeds. The engine and transmission just pair up wonderfully together. At low speeds, the car delivers the fuel economy and relaxed behavior you'd expect out of a Civic. In addition to a limited edition placard in the center console, Mugens also feature a unique 50mm aluminum shift knob. So let's go ahead and flip on the headlamps, fog lamps, and the hazards. The driver's side window is fully automatic. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. The all-new 8th generation Honda Civic was introduced back in 2006. This generation was radically improved in every way over its predecessor from quality, styling, and handling to performance and comfort. 
Produced through 2011, the Gen 8 Civic was available as both a coupe and sedan. It could be had in a variety of trim levels, from basic transportation and economy, including a hybrid model, to more feature-laden offerings. If you're searching for an affordable second-hand car with great value, reliability, and quality, it's hard to ignore this generation of Civic. An all-new chassis and body structure created a larger car than its predecessor while boosting structural stiffness by 35%. This, along with improvements in aerodynamics and sound deadening, helped create what was claimed to be the quietest Civic made up to that point. After spending extensive time with this generation, I wholeheartedly agree. It's more refined in the way it hits the road, feeling much more premium than your typical compact sedan. If you're into in-depth personalization, there's also a wealth of aftermarket potential for these cars to upgrade just about every facet to your wants and needs. Comparing sedans, the Gen 8's wheelbase was lengthened by 3.2 inches, accompanied by a stretch in overall length by 1.3 inches. It's wider by 1.3 inches and lower in height by 0.2 inches. Another key difference is that the Gen 8 sedan and coupe no longer shared identical wheelbases like its predecessor. The coupe's wheelbase is actually 2 inches shorter as is its overall length. For the longest time, if you wanted the high-performance Civic Si, your choices were pretty limited to a coupe or a hatchback. That all changed for the first time in 2007 when Honda bestowed upon the Civic sedan all of the typical Si finishings. This allowed for fairly identical performance even with the sedan's 130 pounds of additional weight, as well as significantly more interior room and a bit more trunk space. The only distinctions between an SI sedan and a standard Civic, aside from the wheels, is the iVTEC dual overhead cam stickers in the lower rear doors, exterior badging, a unique spoiler, and body-colored front grille in the sedan. I would say the car is understated as it doesn't look all that different to the untrained eye, but what was done was highly effective in my opinion. It's not overly styled, just enough to be sporty and handsome without being over the top. On the other hand, the Mugen SI took styling and handling capabilities to a new level. Mugen is an aftermarket tuning company that specializes in Honda vehicles. Along with their involvement in racing over the years, they also manufacture numerous appearance and performance products. The Mugen SI sedan represented the first US-bound car born from a direct collaboration between Honda and Mugen. It also included a full factory warranty. Limited to 1,000 units for the 2008 model year, the Mugen SI features a higher performing suspension, lightweight forged wheels, more aggressive aerodynamic body styling, and a sport-tuned exhaust system. It started out at $29,500, a substantial premium over the standard $21,290 SI sedan. Even then, Mugens were quite pricey considering what else you could buy for thirty grand at the time, but have seemed to hold their resale value pretty decent. Considering how much the individual parts would cost if you were to try and duplicate them on a standard SI, as well as this being a special model, the price doesn't seem quite so bad. The Mugen's more aggressive look consists of a full body kit including front and rear fascias and side skirts. The kit lengthens the car by 1.1 inches over the standard SI. The front integrates oval fog lamps, outer winglets, and a combination satin and gloss black grille. The rear spoiler is adjustable and the rear diffuser is actually functional. The sport exhaust is still a single exit out of the passenger side, but it features a polished tip etched with the Mugen logo. Honda claimed the suspension upgrades were track tested at the Twin Ring Motegi Racing Circuit in Japan. While unfortunately we weren't able to put the Mugen through its paces around a road course or something like that, considering how great the normal SI sedan drives, I imagine it would be an awesome ride. The SI came with a unique set of 17 by 7 inch cast aluminum dark silver painted wheels, wrapped in 215 45 tires. They're larger than what you'd get on a standard Civic, which, depending on the trim level, can be had with either 15 or 16 inch wheels. High performance tires were also available that would allow the SI to hold an impressive 0.9 g of lateral acceleration. On the other hand, the Mugen featured an even larger set of 18 by 7.5 inch, 7 spoke forged aluminum wheels. Each weighed just 17 pounds, which is 27% lighter than the standard SI wheels. They're wrapped in lower profile 21540 summer performance tires. The Mugen's wheels look spectacular in person, especially being slightly larger combined with the lower ride height, they fill up the wheel wells nicely. Bringing the cars to a stop from 60 miles an hour takes about 123 feet thanks to 11.8 by 0.4 inch internally ventilated disc brakes up front with 10.2 by 0.35 inch solid discs in the rear, the largest set available for a Civic at the time. Four channel ABS and electronic brake force distribution all came standard with traction and stability control being added for 2007. They're clamped down by two piston and single piston calipers respectively. 
While there aren't any dedicated brake cooling ducts, there's aerodynamic strakes positioned just ahead of the front tires to direct more air across the rotors to yield a similar effect in helping reduce fade under harder use. All in all, the brakes do a good job for the application. Support in the SI is a fully independent suspension consistent of McPherson struts in front and a multi-link double wishbone set up in the rear. For an added handling edge, SIs in general have higher performing springs, dampers, and larger solid sway bars front and rear. Spring rates for the standard SI are increased by 17% in front and 14% in the rear, along with firmer dampers. Heavier duty front wheel hubs and bearings as well as beefier lower front and rear control arms round out the changes. The Mugen's dampers are firmer even more, both in bump and rebound ratings between 8% and 24% respectively over the standard SI, depending on the conditions. The most noticeable change visually is a lower ride height. It sits 5.3 inches off the ground, which is 0.6 inches lower than the standard SI, not only giving it a more razor sharp handling profile, but it gives it a more hunkered down stance. Despite being the firmest Civic offered at the time, the Mugen was still designed to offer smooth road manners. The overall behavior in the standard car is already pretty good. There's not a lot of body roll, you get a lot of good measure of road feel, but the car is still comfortable, never harsh. Again, quite impressive considering the price point and class. Overall length is 176.7 inches with a width of 69 inches and a height of 58.5 inches. Wheelbase is 106.3 inches while curb weight for the Civic SI sedan is around 2,938 pounds. The magic of the SI lies with its power plant. An all-aluminum, 2-liter dual overhead cam inline 4-cylinder, with 4 valves per cylinder, poor fuel injection, and Honda's intelligent variable valve timing and lift electronic control system, otherwise known as IVTEC. It uses two camshaft profiles, one to optimize economy at low speeds and the other for high RPM power output. A hydraulic system switches between the two profiles and it's all controlled by the ECU. The compression ratio is rated at 11 to 1, along with an incredible 8,000 RPM redline. It develops 197 horsepower at 7,800 RPM and 139 pound-feet of torque at 6,100 RPM, up 37 horsepower and 7 pound-feet of torque over its predecessor. It's also a significant bump from the Civic's standard 1.8 liter single overhead cam engine, which may do with just 140 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. This allows the SI to accelerate to 60 miles an hour in a brisk 6.3 seconds and pass a quarter mile in just under 15 seconds at 95 miles an hour. Honda claimed the SI's unique intake and exhaust tuning emphasized the engine's torque at low RPMs. The Mugen, with its lower back pressure catback exhaust system, definitely wins in the sound department, but standard SI's sound great to start with, especially under full throttle. The real fun though starts at higher RPMs where IVTEC kicks in at around 6,500 RPM, accompanied by a final boost of power all the way to redline. The engine note changes as well, more aggressive and raspy, very unique. You can pretty much pick out where the cam profiles switch over, though all of this happens in the background. All you feel is the smooth power delivery. It's not a rocket ship by any means, but it'll bring a smile to your face every time. The Civic sedan carries a 13.2 gallon fuel tank and requires premium unleaded. EPA estimates range between 22 miles to a gallon in the city and 31 on the highway. The interior differences between the 7th and 8th generation Civics is incredible. The build quality, styling, features, and comfort all take a giant leap forward to create a more premium and modern environment that was nothing short of a visual treat. Still, 10 years later, the original design looks fresh and has aged very well. One of the things I've always appreciated about these Civics were the sounds that the doors made when you shut them. It's almost a trivial thing to think about this day and age, but especially for the class at the time, the rubber insulators they used around the doors provided a particular closure with the body accompanied by a soft thud. Just a cool detail I thought it was worth sharing. Across the doors, there's cloth midsections and armrests with soft touch upper portions. All of the power accessories are within easy reach and there's good storage below. All SIs came with high quality black upholstery along with more aggressive sports seats with big lateral bolsters and adjustable headrests. They're manually adjustable with the driver's seat featuring height adjustment. The seats are supportive and comfortable with built-in lumbar. The seat belts are also adjustable. Down in the footwell is the release for the trunk and fuel cap and there's a prominent dead pedal next to the SI's aluminum sport pedals. As I mentioned earlier, the steering wheel is manually tilting telescoping. 
To the left of the dash is the interior lighting dimmer, trip computer reset, and stability control. The broad, curvaceous dash is definitely the main highlight, especially with the separated instrument cluster. The upper portion is digital, and you have your tachometer just ahead of the steering column. It's all driver-focused. There's a light gray headliner, side curtain airbags, and the option of an automatic sunroof. Inside, the Mugen is identical to a standard SI, aside from a few trim pieces we talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and see how the SI sounds, both sitting still and on the road. We'll also do some static comparisons between the standard car and the Mugen. And we'll go ahead and shut her up.
The Civic was available with a 7-speaker, 350-watt premium audio system with subwoofer that featured speed-sensitive volume control, as well as MP3 playback compatibility and N-CD player auxiliary input, and XM satellite radio was also available when equipped at the navigation infotainment system. It's all pretty simple to use, ergonomically placed, and it has subtle touches of chrome around some of the rings. It looks nice. Right underneath that is a standard single-zone climate control system. Forward visibility out of the 8th generation Civic is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of glass all the way around the car and a huge windshield with small corner windows just ahead of the side view mirrors, so there's basically no blind spots. The sunroof is also a nice touch. There's a lot of storage in the center console, two cup holders, a 12 volt power outlet as well as your auxiliary input. In the center console there's also some storage in addition to an extra power outlet. The multifunction steering wheel is controls for your cruise control and radio. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And check out the back seat real quick. What's up guys? So one of the things that I've always liked about this generation Civic was its high quality and very accommodating interior. I actually have a buddy that has, um, I believe it's the same year, just a regular SI and a, a sedan. And um, I've ridden in the back seat a few times and it's just, it's a very nice, very comfortable place to be for this class. I mean, I really don't think there's anything else in this price point at the time that offered a higher quality interior. Just like the front, the back seat is wrapped in a soft velour type cloth material. Grippier portions in the middle, red accent stitching give a sportier feel. And there's pretty good lateral bolsters up top and down below. A lot of padding, like I said, making it very comfortable, and there's a notable amount of lower back support. I mean, a lot. I could be really comfortable traveling in this car a, a long period of time. You have three adjustable headrests right here. Of course, you can th sit three people across the middle. There's pretty much no drivetrain hump right here, so you don't have to worry about leg interference or anything like that. People my height might be a little bit tight back here just as far as the width, um, kind of a narrow portion right here, but other than that, you can sit three people back here just fine. You also have a padded armrest, again, wrapped in the velour material, and two cup holders. The back seats can fold down for extra storage to the rear, and I'll show that when we get to the trunk portion. There's child safety seat locks, uh, side curtain airbags, reading lamps, grip handles, coat hooks. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, as far as interior room, I'm 5'10", but the comfortable seating position for myself up front, I probably have few inches, three, three and a half inches of leg space, and maybe about an inch and a half of head space. Overall, very airy, very open environment. I like it a lot, and I'm sure you will too if you're shopping with something in this category. So, let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. The trunk can be opened up two ways, either remotely via the key fob or by a small pull lever adjacent to the driver's seat, and I showed that during the interior portion. Inside you have 12 cubic feet of cargo space for the sedan, the coupe has around 11 and a half cubic feet. It's a nice wide opening to accommodate larger items and the liftover height isn't too high. If you needed some extra cargo space though, you can pull the little levers to fold down the 60-40 split rear seat, greatly increasing the practicality of the car. The passenger seat is also manually adjusting, but it lacks the extra height of adjustment that you find on the driver's seat. Down below you have a glove box and a modest amount of space. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2008 Honda Civic Si Mujim. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.